Hello guys, it's Frida. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today is a very fun, exciting day. We are going to talk about aesthetics and how to create one and what they are and why is it so hard. So that uh, some of you guys probably have an idea of what an aesthetic is, but and you've probably seen like aesthetic videos on TikTok and stuff like that. But I wanted to get more into it and how to create one and like kind of break it down a little bit and give you some tips and tricks and apps and things you can use. So that's what we're doing today. So an aesthetic, I'll give you some examples. Uh, but an aesthetic is basically uh, you're picking a theme for your pictures, your videos, your website, your blog, whatever it might be. You're picking a very intentional theme. So this can be usually what, what the easiest way to do it is to pick a color or two colors or pick a filter that you really like and you think represents you. It needs to be something that you really like, obviously something you feel like fits your style. If you're a very happy, bubbly brand, you probably don't want to go with like a black and white aesthetic or too dark and gothy aesthetic because that doesn't really represent who you are. Once you figure out kind of what your brand stands for, which we'll get into in a branding video, like figuring out your brand and what it should stand for. But once you've figured out like, is it a happy brand? Is it a darker brand? Is it a funny brand? Is it a whatever it is, uh, pick something that suits it. For me, for instance, I am a pretty positive, happy person. So I like to keep it uh, somewhat bright. So if you see like my channel banner and my channel art is all like bright colors, it's like pineapples, it's a fun text and stuff like that. So <clears throat> where do you even start? Like how do you create an aesthetic? So once you've picked your colors, then it's time to kind of dig into what does that mean for my brand and where do I apply it? So once you've picked an aesthetic, right Hannah? You picked an aesthetic? Let's say you're going with like an orange. Let's say that's your aesthetic. Orange and like a little moody maybe. Let's say that's your aesthetic. So then you want to use your editing skills to create this, figure out, and this is where like some people go wrong is that they'll be like, oh my aesthetic is like a feeling and maybe a color, but then they don't stick to it. So like you have to commit if it's gonna look really good, which means that you have to be consistent with your filter. So if you pick a filter in a certain setting, you have to do it on every single photo. And depending on the way the photos are shot and the lighting that they're shot in, they're gonna look different. So they're gonna maybe require a little heavier editing or a little lighter editing. The more, most important thing is that they match. My recommendation is always to try to shoot in the same kind of lighting setting. Uh, so if you're doing flash photography, uh, you can obviously do other stuff, but it's way easier if you like straight up just do flash photography. Or if you're shooting during the daytime, uh, or maybe golden hour, let's say you're always shooting golden hour because that's when you get home. Then you stick to that. If you're throwing in a flash photography all of a sudden, it's gonna kind of break it off. And like, sometimes that can look fun and good, but sometimes it gets confusing. The main thing that I look at if you have a collection of photos that you've taken is how do they flow together. You want the colors to connect. So if one end of the photo is like black and then the other end of another photo starts with a little bit of black and then goes into something else I like to put them together, if that makes sense. Just make sure that they flow easily. That's not like, unless that's your style, like color blocking is your style, then you know, it's intentional, but make sure they flow together. So I'm gonna show you some of the apps that I use when I edit, I know a lot of people use Lightroom or they use Photoshop and edit. I do some on the occasion, but, and I know how to use it, but it's way easier on the go. Like usually when I'm posting something, I'm already out. I mean, I'm already taking the photo. I can transfer it from my camera straight to my phone. So literally all my dogs are on the couch. So I don't necessarily always go home and I don't always have a computer. Uh, I do have Photoshop and Lightroom on my phone, but that's not really the same. So I tend to just do it in other apps and mix apps. So my main app that I use is called Visco. Visco has a lot and a lot of filters. If you just download the free version, I don't think it have, has as many. I have the, uh, what they call Visco X, which is like a subscription yearly and it's like 20 bucks a year, so it's not bad. And then you get 
a million filters. Uh, what I like about Visco is that it doesn't take away from the original quality of the photo. So if I shoot on an actual good camera, it doesn't strip away any of the quality by adding like a low quality filter. Another app that I like to use is called Afterlight. It's what I'm currently using for my current aesthetic that I have going. I'm currently using filters from this app to create my current aesthetic. I go into filters, seasons, and then I use brook as well as hedge. So I combine two filters and that's how I create the look. I uh, highly recommend this, it's a fun app. A couple others I like to use, especially if you're shooting on a phone and you don't have the depth perception. Snapseed is a really good one. Uh, you can kind of blur the edges and make it look like it's a nicer camera than it actually is. I like in light. And if you're trying to go for a more like artsy thing, I like Glitch, Glitch. I also have um, the Photoshop Express app on my phone, which can help edit uh, some blemishes. I don't really use Facetune. I don't really love it. I know a lot of people just use that if they want to fix something. I just haven't really been into that app, so that's just me. So these are some apps that are great to use. Look through them. Uh, honestly, if you're just starting out and you're trying to figure out your aesthetic, I would go through all these filters and these apps and pick one that you really like. Like pick something that you like the look of and don't just try it on one photo. Let's say your last four posts, try it on all four and see how they look together. Uh, another great tool when you're trying to create a flow and an aesthetic is to use a scheduling app. There are a ton of them. I am currently using Unum and I think it's really good because you can basically place out your photos, make sure they match and they go together. So what I was talking about with like one photo kind of flowing into the next one, that's a really great way to do it. I've also used Planoly, which is really good. That does the same thing as well as just honestly having a spam account on Instagram and I post it on there, see what it looks like. Especially when it comes to video and you wanna pick a cover or something, I'll usually post it on my spam first, which is a private account and just see what it looks like. And that's basically it. That's a very basic way to start an aesthetic. I hope you learned something new today about aesthetics and that you're maybe one step closer to creating your own. Please let me know if you have any questions about it in the comments below. I'm happy to answer anything. Or if you want me to make a video about something else that you really wanna learn about, please leave a comment below. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and hit the subscribe button to get more videos about uh, social media and branding and anything you might need to know about the digital world. If you want to know more, you can follow me on social media at Hey It's Frida, Hey with a J because I'm Swedish. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!